Hey everyone, welcome to the community call for office add-ins. Today is March 13th. We're excited to have everyone here today. Uh, just a few notes about the community call as we get started here. Uh, first of all, if you don't already have the recurring meeting invite for this call in your account, you can use that AKA MS link to download it. Uh, the next call will be next month. This is a monthly call, so it's second Wednesday of every month. Next call is April 10th, uh, 2019. Uh, each call, for those of you who haven't joined us before, is a chance for you to uh, meet the members of the product teams that are behind Office add-ins in, in the platform. Um, we talk a lot about what's new, what's coming soon with the Office JavaScript APIs. And we also typically do a deep dive into a, a certain topic each call and give you a chance to ask any questions you have. Um, one quick note before we get started or as we get started here, if you're not uh, presenting, please go ahead and mute yourselves uh, so that we don't get any background noise there. Thank you. All right, so we got a really full agenda today. Um, we'll start, we'll do a quick overview of Office add-ins as we always do. Uh, Sahail is here to talk about what's new and what's coming soon with the Outlook JavaScript APIs. Uh, we have uh, Sudhir here to talk about, I'm sorry, Natesh here to talk about Office add-ins SSO. Um, and then David will talk a little bit about something you were doing with Office add-ins patterns and practices. Uh, Sudhir is here to talk about Edge Web View Control. Um, and then we have a customer demo today uh, from Mark Roden, who will be joining us shortly to show an add-in that is a word with SharePoint. All right, so just a quick look at the folks that are joining us today. I'm Kim Brandel. Uh, my colleague Doug here and David Chestnut is in the room as well. We also have uh, Sahail, Nitesh, Sudhir, and as I mentioned, customer uh, Mark Roden, also uh, Microsoft MVP. So with that, I'll hand off to Doug for the view of Office Addicts. La, la même que je peux dire. Oh, OK. Hey. Up. If, if you uh, if you have your uh, speaker on, if you could mute, um, that would be great. Thanks. So, um, hi, this is Doug. I'm going to give a quick overview of the Office Add-ins platform. If you already know the Office Add-ins platform, great time to refill your cup of coffee. And if you're new to Office Add-ins, just going to take a minute or two to tell you what they're all about. So, Office Add-ins are web apps. Fundamentally, the most important thing to understand is it's just a simple web app built with JavaScript or TypeScript and HTML and CSS. And uh, the thing that makes it an add-in is we have a manifest file. This is generated by the Yo Office tool. You don't actually write this XML yourself. It's just generated, and it points at your app. And then you can sideload that app into the various Office clients. So as a developer, there's a way that you can sideload this and run it locally for dev and test. And then when you're ready to publish, you can push that manifest, uh, manifest to the Office store, and that's how you publish your app. So because it's just a web app, it can do anything you can do with the web app. You can hit APIs and cloud services and so on. You can use Microsoft Graph for all sorts of things. I don't know what happened to our graph graphic there. And then um, the Office JS um, library is the JavaScript wrapper around the APIs in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, all of the Office clients. So that's how you get at the content of the current document or a message and Outlook and that sort of thing. Um, so that's just a quick overview of what Office add-ins are all about. Uh, to learn more, that link there, I'll paste in the chat window in a minute, is where we have lots of documentation, quick starts, tutorials, and so on. And I'll hand it back to Kim. Thanks, Doug. All right, we showed this slide briefly during last month's call, and we got some good feedback already from a lot of you. If you haven't already done so, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we stood up this survey, aka MS. Um, essentially, we're just looking to gather information about the tools or resources that you find most valuable to you as developers building on the Office platform, and what tools are and resources might be missing that would be really useful to you. So we're, we're always looking for your feedback. If you haven't already done so, please do uh, take a minute. It's a really short form. Just provide your feedback, and we'll uh, do our best to uh, be responsive to that. All right, with that, we have uh, moving on to talk about the Outlook JavaScript APIs, and Sahail is here. Sahail? Uh, yeah. Um, sorry, let me put my phone on mute. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Sahil Zafar. I am a program manager in the Outlook extensibility team. Um, for starters, I wanted to give an update on the requirement sets that are currently in 
prod as well as the ones we are planning to release next. So right now we have released a requirement set 1.7, uh, but uh, some of the APIs on Outlook for Mac are still in progress. Uh, mainly, uh, sorry, there's a lot of background. If you're not speaking, can you please go on mute? Okay, so the recurrence API, which lets you now manage the recurrence pattern, uh, the API that provides you the series ID and the events when a recurrence changes or a recipient is added or removed from a meeting or appointment, as well as the time. So these APIs we have, they are available in new OVA. They are available in Outlook 2016 C2R build, uh, and they are in progress on Outlook for Mac. Uh, the tentative date we are targeting to have them available in Outlook for Mac is um, a late Q2. Um, and as you can see also that uh, a lot of the we have uh, started to focus more on the new OVA and, and uh, we will selectively backport any API uh, to old OVA right now in the current API set as well as the planned API set. There's no such API which we think will make the cut for backporting to old OVA. And you can also see that we are now focusing on adding new future support to the Office 365 subscription builds for Outlook. And we do not plan to backport um, these uh, new features to the MSI build, which is uh, the non-subscription build for Outlook 2016, as well as older versions of Outlook. And then also on Outlook for mobile, we will selectively look at uh, adding new features and new APIs because um, we are doing a rethinking of the overall experience on mobile. And as part of that, right now, we are not focusing on adding um, new APIs to it, but we want to make sure that the experience on the mobile is uh, really, really good. So the first scenario we are looking into is um, we will be able to talk about it in the May community call. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the next requirement set that is currently in plan is a requirement set 1.8. Uh, it's currently in progress, and uh, but the APIs are available in uh, preview. Uh, as you can see, I won't go over the each API in uh, line by line, but you can see from here that we have a bunch of uh, APIs planned, which will enable a lot of uh, problems facing, which will actually address a lot of problems faced by our partners today, such as um, manipulating attachment content and associated events, internet headers, categories, location, as well as support for shared folders and blocking and hooking on uh, into the send event. So um, the work is in progress on new OVA um, for a lot of these APIs. We have completed the work for most of them in the Win32 and the API is available in preview. And as I said earlier, uh, backporting to MSI or earlier builds of Outlook is not currently planned. And then uh, development on Mac is also in progress. And for requirements at 1.8 as well, we are tentatively looking at late Q2, early Q3 for making them generally available. And then next slide. Uh, and then uh, some general updates that enabling shared folders, delegate access support is currently in preview as I said earlier, uh, and then also hooking on to the unsend event is also in uh, internal doc food. Um, the timeline, as I said earlier, is late Q2, early Q3. That's the tentative timeline we're targeting for making this these capabilities generally available. 
And uh, um, uh, as I mentioned in the last previous call, the ability to hook onto the on-send event, the current plan is uh, that uh, it'll be available in for line of business add-ins only, which means that uh, add-ins that hook into the on-send event cannot be put on the store. However, organizations or partners can build such add-ins and administrators can deploy uh, these add-ins to their tenant if they want. So that's basically at a high level what's going on in the Outlook add-ins world. Um, Kim, I'm assuming we'll, um, we'll get questions over chat and I will reply to them later. Uh, so next up, uh, we have uh, Nitesh here to give us an update on Office add-ins SSO. Thanks, Kim. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Nitesh. Uh, I've joined sort of newly to this team now. Um, so I thought it would be a good idea to just take a step back and talk about what is SSO for Office Add-ins since it's been in preview for so long now. Um, so Office Add-ins means different things for an end user and different for an application or a developer. Um, so what does it really mean for an application? For an application, it means that you can access users' identity. You can authenticate the user in silently without any login prompts. Um, and you can access their graph. Uh, of course, to access their graph, and um, uh, you need first get their consent. You don't really have to uh, log in again once they're logged into their uh, Office application. And in terms of roaming, they don't have to consent uh, if they have if they're using different machines. Kim, if you can go to the next slide. So let's. I uh, wanted to briefly touch upon the current state of SSO. So we had briefly gone GA with SSO last year, but then we rolled back uh, because we found um, some really degraded user experiences. Um, and currently, we are sort of blocked uh, as there are some hard technical roadblocks that we are hitting right now. Um, so uh, in terms of deployment, I just wanted to briefly touch upon this because uh, I got a couple of questions in the last community call for this. Um, so when it comes to the store, we are right now monitoring it. And if you have an SSO enabled add-ins, uh, which means that uh, we see your manifest, we sort of block it for now. But uh, from uh, uh, the COP catalog, this is something that we do not do right now. We do not monitor, but I just wanted to uh, take a second and point out that this is not a model that we um, support right now. So we don't recommend that you do that. Um, we only would want you to do it once we start uh, supporting or shipping um, SSO. However, uh, so our team is uh, working um, uh, towards a plan to ship it incrementally. Um, and currently, we are in the planning process. So hopefully, by the next community call, I should be having an update on what our plan is to ship SSO. Uh, I'll request uh, the community to briefly take um, a survey, uh, which I've put out here. Uh, and Kim, you can paste that link over uh, in the chat as well. So this is a new survey that I've put out to just get a feeling of uh, what you guys think about SSO. Kim, if you can go over to the next slide. Yeah, so um, uh, there was a survey that was put out uh, in the last couple of community calls. Um, so I wanted to just take a, um, just, you know, uh, analyze, uh, provide my analysis on top of it. Um, so we've got 21 respondents, so thank you for that. 43% um, of you said that your primary motivation of using SSO was to authenticate the users. And some of you said that it was to access graph. Um, a high 62% of you said that you're primarily deploying your add-ins through COP catalog, which is great. Uh, and 40% of you said that you wanted to show consent dynamically to the end users. Now, we are actively uh, listening to you. And um, um, you know I did uh, interview a few of you. Thank you for that. Um, and based on this, we are planning to create uh, a shipping plan for SSO. And I'll be sharing that soon. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Natesh. <clears throat> And as Natesh mentioned, we'll we'll probably have an update on SSO. We'll continue to update you um, hopefully next time in, in the April call. Natesh will be back uh, to talk a little bit more about our plans to ship SSO in the coming months. Uh, so next we have uh, David Chestnut here. He's a senior dev writer. And he's here to talk about a new initiative we're spinning up here for office add-ins, patterns, and practices. David? Yeah, thanks, Kim. Um, so I'm just going to talk uh, briefly about patterns and practices. This is a new content type that uh, we're, we're rolling out. 
Uh, if you've seen SharePoint patterns and practices, this is essentially the same thing. Uh, there isn't any difference. Uh, and, and if you haven't seen this before, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly talk about what it is. So patterns and practices are kind of like Legos. They're like developer code Legos in that they're like little patterns that you can reuse in your code in certain scenarios. Um, so they tend to be like specific to certain types of solutions and scenarios. So for example, you might uh, we might have a pattern that says, here's how you can store an access token that you get. Like you can use any auth method you want, but once you get the token, here's a pattern for doing that. And you can take that code and reuse it in your solution. Um, so these can be expressed. practices they can also be written guidance and sometimes they're both sometimes you'll see documentation that we have and then it links off to the code that goes with it the one of the primary things about these is that they're community driven so we really want these to be in the community space um, as we're spinning this up uh, a lot of the development works coming from us to kind of prime the pump and get it going but long term what we'd like to get to is is really community is participating and helping with contributions and coming up with the ideas of the things that, which by say community, I mean you guys, like what you want to see. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Um, so kind of expounding on the community aspect a little bit, like, so I mentioned it's, it's a new content type. So I, I just want to talk quickly, like, yeah, what are these content types? So like, if you go to look at the product documentation today, you'll see it covers uh, various things like getting it started. Oh, we're getting some static from somebody. Uh, getting started, there's tutorials, uh, the documentation, we'll talk about core feature scenarios. There's also the API reference. Um, so these are very, you know, much like a, having a manual. Uh, the PMP docs are more about the circle of the developer's concerns. So we're looking at, you know, what do the developers have to deal with in their day-to-day -day world of developing? Um, and so there might be integration scenarios, like how do I work with Azure? Like say I'm writing a custom function and I want to call an Azure function and have my code up in Azure and then pull that down into my add-in. How would I do that? Uh, maybe you want to work with SQL Server or another type of data store. Um, maybe you're saving something out as CSV files or those kinds of things with your add-ins. Um, we also have, uh, you know, there's developers out there that are trying to figure out how do we start bridging from VSTO com kind of add-ins into Office web add-ins and start working with those. Um, you know, bridge the gap there. So there's patterns there. There's also just best practices, like sometimes, you know, developers working on storing a token or something. It's kind of like, am I doing this the best way? Is you know, and so sometimes we can have patterns or guidance that just show like, hey, here's a good way to do this. So that developer's concern is really where we want to focus on with this type of documentation. Um, so we would love to get your feedback, you know, on these things and what you know typical scenarios you run into. And can you go to the next slide? Please? Um, so in terms of what these are, where they're at, what they're going to look like, uh, there's a PMP repo on our office dev org. It's the PMP office add-ins repo. So we're adding samples there. You'll also see these, you know, when there's written guidance that'll show up in the product documentation. And as I said before, it can be a combination of both. Um, and I think I go to the demo. Is that the next slide? Yes. Yeah. So let me show you one of these. Oh, I need to share my screen. This is the async storage pattern. Sharon? Looks like it's working. Okay. Uh, so, all right. So I have Excel online running. And one of the scenarios uh, we ran into when, so custom functions is in preview right now. And so we're working with some early adopters. And one of the things we ran into was um, because custom function code runs like in a different runtime than the task pane part of your add in, they can't like talk directly to each other. So one of the scenarios like you might authenticate and say the custom function authenticates first and gets an access token. How would you share that token over to the task pane so you don't end up authenticating the user twice? Um, so this is a sample that shows how you can send data back and forth between the two. So in the task pane part of this, I can type in a value that I want to send to my custom function. So I could say like, hello, custom function and hit the send button. And there's an async storage API behind the scenes that it's storing that into, which shares it. And then when I use my custom function, which is in the Contoso namespace, I have this get value function I added. And the key that it's been named is token. So I'm going to say, okay, go get my token. And then it 
should get that value out. Oh, did I type something wrong? I'm not sure it heard you click the send or Oh, there it goes. It just, I, I'm not sure what, but it worked. <laughs> so, um, so now my custom function has access. If that had been an access token, I could have gotten it that way. I can also send them the other way. So I can say, let's do a store value. Um, in this case, the name of it is token, and then I give it the value. So I'll say, hello, task pane. And when I click receive in the task pane, I can see, oh, I got that value back that the custom function sent to me. So just kind of, do I have time to show the code real quick? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah okay. So this is the add-in that's uh, up on the repo. And if you go, I have it open in VS Code here. If I go into like my function code for the custom function, here's the JavaScript. Here's my store value function that, we, that you saw. Here's the get value. So for example, to get a value, you call into Office Runtime, async storage, get item with key value, which in this case is set to token and it gets that value out. Um, store value is very similar. So you can see how you set your item to the key value pair. Um, and then on the task pane side, which has its folder over here, this is all in the same add-in. Um, here's where we send the token. So again, it's just a call to async storage that set item, or if you want to get it back out and display it on the task pane, uh, that's down here, async storage check get item. So the pattern, uh, the code inside the PMP pattern is sh showing you how to do these things, and you could take and reuse this code in your own solutions. Um, one final thing. Show real quick. So here's the PMP Office add-ins. So we created this Excel custom functions folder in the repo. And if you drill down into there, we have our async storage. And then there's the solution down there with the README that explains how to use it and so on. So we'll be adding more to this. Uh, if you have email in the slide, uh, feel free to reach out to me. And I think that's it. Awesome, that's really great, Thank David. You. A question for you, David, just, um, so we mentioned the ultimately, you know, initially we'll be kind of driving the creation of this patterns and practices content um, and populating that repo and our docs with more samples. Um, ultimately, we want this to be, over time, become more community driven. Are we ready at this point, if somebody has a great pattern and practice they want to share with others, are we ready for them to go ahead and submit a PR against this repo? Is that how we'd like them to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I would say if you if you have something working and it's like a common scenario you think lots of people benefit from, then yeah, create a create a PR. Awesome. Yeah, so we definitely welcome your contributions there. Um, feel free to go out to the P Office Add-ins. Is it Office Add-ins PNP or PNP Office Add-ins? It's PNP dash Office Add-ins. Office add yeah. yeah. Uh, repo and Doug, maybe you can paste the link into into the chat here so everybody has well, yeah. it as well. We'll do. All right, next up we have Sudhir here to give us an update on Edge WebView Control for Office add-ins. He was here last month to talk pretty in depth about this topic, and uh, given you know um, the need for everybody to be aware that this is coming and be able to test things ahead of time, he's here again to just just to reiterate briefly some of that messaging from last month and give us any updates he may have since then. Sudhir. Awesome. Thanks, Kim. Uh, good morning, everybody. Afternoon, evening, depending on where you are. Um, my name is Sudhir, as uh, Kim just mentioned, um, and I'm a program manager in the Office uh, Developer Platform team. Um, so just to reiterate the message, I was here last uh, last month. Uh, if folks on the call have been on the NDA uh, call we had about a month or a month and a half ago, I was there as well. Um, again, just to reiterate the message, um, the um, we're moving from an Office Platform standpoint for Win32 from the IE Trident control to the Edge control. Uh, you'll see the... Um, the version of Office over here, that's 16.0.11425. That's where the Edge Web View Control is the default control at this point. Uh, of course, we talked about sort of the benefits of the Edge Control and, and what it brings to the platform and so on and so forth. It's a modern control, it's performant, uh, it's standards compliant and supports the latest uh, JavaScript specifications in, in a full uh, feature set of HTML5 uh, feature set, including things like media and recording and location and so on and so forth. So. Really exciting feature set. Uh, we're getting way, way closer to, to getting this out there to, um, to the community um, on the platform. Um, and again, as I said, uh, this is only available on Windows 10, uh, the 1902 version, I believe, 0102, starting with the 1901 or 02 version and that version of Office. Kim, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide for me. 
So uh, the impact, again, as we've discussed this before, uh, because the Edge Web View Control is going to be the default control on the platform, uh, this means that you'll have to, number one, go out and test your add-in with this new control. Uh, number two, uh, potentially make any changes to your add-in to make sure that this works with the new control as well as the old IE target control. Uh, just as a reminder, Office add-ins work on the, the latest versions of Office and also the older versions of Office and Windows. Uh, so we'll have to make sure that uh, your add-in um, works on, on both those versions of, uh, of the browser control, if you will. Uh, it's really, really important that you actually go out and test it. Uh, and if you do have any breaking issues, uh, certainly let us know as we as in as, as again as we've talked about in the past. What this does not impact is uh, versions of Office that's lower than the one one four two five that you see on the screen over there. Um, again, we, we're going to just use the the existing IE uh, Trident control um, as the default control over there. It also obviously does not affect uh, non-Windows platforms such as Mac or iOS or Android and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, again, that's a that's a critical call out over there. Um, also, one other call out uh, the uh, on the Windows 18 um, OX versions, uh, IE and uh, Trident control is still the default control over there. All right, uh, we talked about some some known issues. Uh, those remain as is. Uh, again, I, I believe that the second one has been fixed in the latest version. If you get the latest version of Office, uh, the second one being the the certificate issue that we talked about uh, during last month. For the first one, which is the uh, the local host loopback issue, um, that still remains. Uh, you still have to go in and make sure that there's an exemption added uh, for local host. Uh, if you do have any questions on that, let us know. But uh, again, the instructions to, to sort of take care of that are right there on the screen for you. Uh, and then the last one, the navigating to subdomains, that also I believe has been um, fixed in the latest versions of Office. Uh, again, if you wouldn't mind going and uh, taking a look at it and uh, again, giving us feedback, that'd be, that'd be fantastic. Uh, but again, uh, sort of the, the most critical aspect of all of this is uh, please go ahead, download the latest versions of Office and Windows. Um, we we briefly talked about well, that is not required anymore. As long as you get the latest version of Office and the latest version of Windows, you will have to be part of the Windows and Office Insiders program for that. Uh, but as as long as you get those latest versions, uh, you will have uh, the the edge control as the default control in those versions of Office and Windows. So um, again, uh, go ahead and take a look at it, test it out, and uh, let us know if you have any feedback. Uh, a quick call out on the feedback. Um, you know, make sure that uh, you're letting us know of issues that you can't fix. So things like, hey, you know, Excel crashed when I did this. Uh, that is a problem. So do let us know. Or there's some sort of a you know scrolling issue or some sort of a UI issue that's beyond sort of your control in terms of you know the general web development practices. Uh, certainly, let us know um, if you will. Uh, and at this time, like if if there's anybody who's taken a look at it and uh, has any feedback, I'm happy to sort of um, hear hear you folks out just briefly. Um, but otherwise, I believe those are the only slides that I had uh, uh, in terms of a just quick update on what's happening from a from a from an edge web view perspective. Great, thanks, Sadir. Um, just so folks are clear, if they want to provide feedback or have experienced issues with this, how should they do that? Should they contact you directly? You want us to share your email, or do you want to do the um, have them log an issue? Yeah, I think having them log an issue would be uh, would be fantastic. If you uh, go back and like, pick, there you go. Um, so take a look at that uh, GitHub over there. Uh, go ahead and, um, and sort of log an issue over there. We're uh, we're sort of paying a close close attention to it. So as long as you log in an issue over there, we will take a look and we'll respond directly over there on GitHub so the, the rest of the community can sort of look at uh, the response. Excellent. Yep, so go ahead and um, most of you should be familiar with our Office JS uh, repository out on GitHub. Uh, please do let us know your feedback along the way as you test your add-in. Thanks, Sudhir. Thanks. All right, uh, next up we have a uh, customer and Microsoft MVP Mark Roden here with us. He's the Director of Tactical Solutions at PSC Group in Chicago, and he's here to share with us something that he's put together, an add and he's built in Word uh, that actually integrates with SharePoint. So Mark, with that, I'll hand over to you and feel free to share your screen and unmute yourself if you're already muted. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. We can, perfect. Brilliant, okay. Well, I will share my screen. Uh, let me know if you can see me. 
Yep, we see your PowerPoint deck. Okay, Perfect. cool. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, so today, uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about myself, my company, and show you what I believe is uh, an important demo uh, for Office add-ins when I am talking to my customers about what is a great benefit of Office add-ins, um, and that's as an integrator, or I'm the integrator, it's a capability I use. So uh, I'm Mark, <laughs> and uh, Director of Technical Solutions here at PSC, and I solve problems, that's what I do, um, and I'm lucky enough to found a company that lets me be me, and uh, I integrate with a great uh, group of dedicated people here at PSC, uh, and over time I have gone from being a developer to mentor and evangelist MVP. Um, and PSC is a custom application development uh, firm, and you know we focus on building business aligned technologies and capabilities across a wide range of industries. You know, um, some of our core competencies are um, automation, workplace, uh, modern workplace, business intelligence, and process enablement. And we work with multiple uh, platforms like Office 365 uh, and SharePoint online. So, all of that said, let's take a look at the actual demo. So, like I said, so, you know, a lot of my clients are asking, you know, where's the benefit of Office add-ins? Why, can you see me? We're seeing your desktop right now. You, yeah, uh, Teams is always fun when you go in and out of PowerPoint. Let me try that again. You should see SharePoint. Perfect, we're seeing SharePoint. Okay, brilliant, okay. So again, a lot of my uh, customers say, you know, well, we have uh, VSTO and VBA add-ins. What's the benefit of using an Office add-in? And so I use this uh, as a demonstration of being able to take data from a cloud service and integrate it into your Office applications. Uh, I think last month we saw a great example in Excel where data is taken so that reporting can be done in Excel. This is a demonstration of being able to do a similar thing within Word. So what I'm looking at now is uh, just a list in SharePoint and you know I have uh, rich text just you know just for the sake of demo. And well, I did. Hello. We're still working. Here we go. All right, so I'm, and I'm just going to edit this just to show that this is live. Uh, and you know, maybe we'll change some of the rich text, and we'll we'll stick in an emoji just for giggles, because we can. All right. So this is just data in SharePoint. All right. So the demo I have within Word. Uh, what it does is it's actually I've actually hooked it into the preview version of um, SSO. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to prompt me to you know say who I am, and I'm going to give it my. Uh, oop. That's my developer account. And then it's actually going to go out. It's going to collect the assertion token, and it's then going to use that to securely log me into SharePoint online. So as you can see, I now have the list. Um, and from that list, I'm now able to make queries to the graph and then insert the data into Word. So. And there's a lot going on in, in the background uh, here, um, but in principle, we are just making uh, calls as a web developer to Microsoft Graph endpoints, taking the data and inserting it into Word document. So a big benefit to uh, our clients is that we can now use a web developer skill to build Office add-ins, does not have to be someone who's traditionally um, VBA, .NET developer. So the ability to broaden the, the skill base of who can build these things uh, is significant, all right? Um, 
So one of the things I want to show you as a web developer, for okay, so for full, uh, you know, um, to be honest and true, I have never been a .NET developer. Um, and I almost certainly never will be. I'm a web developer, and Microsoft basically exposed their environment to me to be able to play in it. As a web developer, I can build Office add-ins. So some of the tools that I use uh, in my web development capability is Postman. All right? It allows me to interact with uh, REST endpoints and the Graph API. So one of the things I built as part of this demo, uh, and I've actually uh, created a GitHub site with a sample Postman file, is as I was going through the SSO documentation and trying to figure out where everything went, it's just much easier for me to build it in here and see if it works before I then implement it within my add-in. So what I'm going to show you is I use, because we're still on IE 11, I can, I use this F12 tool to be able to basically expose the developer tools of this IE window. And within there, I'm actually just going to unhide something down the bottom. All right, so I'm not going to go into the how all of this works, why all of this works. And as Natesh mentioned earlier, this is still in preview and, you know, do not make any business decisions based on what you're seeing here. But basically the process is that the SSO functionality gives me an assertion token. And this basically says who I am, what is the time and what I'm going to request access to. All right. So if we take that, we then take that and as part of a, requ uh, a request back to my app within uh, Azure AD, we then request an actual bearer token, which is used to access the graph. So it's a two-step OAuth process. We can then take that particular access token and then we can actually make the request that we need to the graph. It is much easier to figure out how all of this works in this environment than it is to do it in source control, have it post up to your add-in, see if it works, curse a little bit, come back again. So I would strongly encourage everybody, uh, if they're going to start uh, building uh, with an SSO capability, again, once it's actually GA, is to figure out how to get the assertion token first and then what you're going to do with it and then build it into your add-in. And as I mentioned, for those of you that know what Postman is, I've actually created a GitHub site and I'll post it into the chat when we're done here that actually has the sample file and then in all of this, we have all of the different individual aspects of what is necessary to turn an assertion token into the, the actual bearer token for authorization that we need for the graph. Uh, because each one of these are documented, but you know it, it's always easier to start with somebody else's code and modify it than start from scratch on your own. Okay, so that's basically uh, the demo, which is kind of, you know, part client based and part, you know, developer based. Um, if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Excellent. Thanks, Mark. Really great illustration of um, the value prop of SSO and being able to integrate with multiple Microsoft services. Um, and also, like we, you said, like we saw last month with the Excel demo, just the ability for an Office add-in to reduce uh, users' need to context switch, to switch context between, sure, the user could have gone to SharePoint and logged into SharePoint and manually copied and then pasted that snippet into Word, uh, but how great is it that you can expose that same capability by having an add-in running in Word and keep the user from having to switch back and forth? That's really great. Um, also really great to, to see the use of Postman here. Um, Anybody who's been a web developer for a while will appreciate this tool and how useful it can be, especially in the context of SSO. And like you said, it's kind of difficult sometimes to piece together the steps and the data that you need and get things work wired together correctly. Um, really great to be able to do that using Postman and get the calls working correctly. And then at that point, take those calls and plug them into your code. A lot more efficient to do it that way. So thanks for that demo. That was really great. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here again. Yep. Let me stop doing that and go on. All right. 
So next up, uh, we have Doug is going to speak just for a second here uh, about Microsoft Build. Yeah, so um, Build is coming up May 6th to 8th. If you've never been there, this is kind of our um, premier developer conference each year. And uh, this year, um, Build is in Seattle and registration is open. Uh, here, I will paste in that link. And um, there's a lot of great deep dive content at Build. Um, one thing that's new this year, just FYI, um, kind of in the fine print over there, um, you can bring a student between age 14 to 21 um, to build at, at no cost um, if you have a ticket to build. Um, and this is part of just we're trying to encourage people to get um, young people excited about software development. So it's kind of a great opportunity for uh, young people there as well. So um, that that's really all we have on build. Um, don't have specific details of sessions or anything yet, but there's going to be deep content across all of the Microsoft technologies there. So it'll be a great learning experience if you can make it to build in May. Awesome, thanks, Doug. And I imagine, so next month's call, April, I imagine by then we'll probably have some more details in terms of uh, what are the office development sessions and, and yeah. maybe some highlights there. Great. All right, um, every month I show this form and every month we get some great uh, feedback from you, so I'm gonna do it again. We really love to hear from you in terms of, um, you know, are you interested in presenting during an upcoming call? If you're interested in providing feedback about the Office add-ins documentation and uh, helping us improve that, we'd love to hear from you. There's this form, Doug, maybe you can paste the link into the uh, chat window for everyone, aka AMS Office add-ins engage, um, where you just provide your information and we'll reach out and contact you. I really appreciate those folks who have done so uh, already and we look forward to hearing from more of you hopefully in the days to come. So with that said, uh, we're actually running a little ahead of schedule for a change today. Uh, how are we doing on questions in the IM window, Doug? We have any unanswers we need to get um, to? Or? Yeah, there's a couple here. Let's see. Oh, Mark, somebody asked what your uh, developer MVP um, designation is. Office developer, right? Uh, that is correct, yes. Uh, one of the 10 original Office add-in developers uh, who were awarded three years ago, 2016, and have been ever since. Cool. Uh, let's see, there was a question about memory allocation limit of Office add-ins if backed by the Edge WebView control. Um, with IE, it was about 2 gig. Um, is, is Sudhir on the call? Sudhir, do you know anything about that? Uh, we might have to follow up on that one. Uh, let's see. Timetable for bringing SSO to regular Office 365. I'm not sure I know what that means. Is Natesh still on the call with us? Yes, we'll follow up on that one as well. Uh, let's see, questions about the PowerPoint JavaScript API. Um, it, generally speaking, most of the team is very focused on the Excel and Outlook APIs right now, uh, just because that's where we see the, the most interest, the most demand, um, that, that there's a lot going on in those areas. So I think it's a fair observation that the PowerPoint uh, JavaScript APIs, um, we haven't really delivered anything there for a while. Um, I don't think we have anything to announce on that at the time. It's just a matter of prioritization. Uh, we definitely have plans to flesh that out further, but uh, nothing to talk about right now there. Interested in PowerPoint APIs, highly encourage you to head out to User Voice. Um, we'll paste the, the link here in the chat at the, in a few minutes here. Um, but if you haven't already done so, there's a I know there's a User Voice request specifically for it's kind of a general um, for more PowerPoint APIs. So if you are interested in PowerPoint APIs, please go out there and upvote that request so that we, you know, over time can get a, a good sense for how many people are interested in that. That'd be great. There's a question about um, can document save action be initiated from an add-in in PowerPoint in Excel? Um, I'm not sure about that. We'll, so. we'll have to follow up on that one. Um, so, and just just a reminder for everyone here: um, any of the questions that come in, either via the form. Some of you asked a couple of questions kind of last minute before the call today via the form that we publish ahead of time, um, and also the questions that go unanswered that you typed in the IM chat window today. Any questions that we aren't able to get to, we always post those in the blog post that we publish later the week later in the week of the blog or, or the community call. So, 
should be by end of Friday. We'll have the blog post published, and in that you should see your question answered. So um, we'll probably go ahead and do that with the remaining questions in the IM chat window. Yeah, and here, um, for anyone who isn't familiar, I will uh, paste in, here's the link to the Office Developer blog where that post will show up here in the next day or two. Perfect. All right, so just a quick look at developer resources. Um, most of you are already familiar, but if you're not, here's some great resources for you. Um, if you're not already a member of the Office Developer Program, there's some great benefits um, that you can get by doing so, by joining the program. So check out that first link there, aka AMS Office Dev Program, if you're not already a member. We highly encourage you to join. Um, Script Lab, great tool for testing Office add-ins and prototyping, you know, getting, getting experience with the Office JavaScript API calls. Um, obviously, we have the docs. We have the open spec for Excel, um, custom functions information. Uh, we have a special link for that, since it'll be of interest to a lot of you. Um, and then just, we, we really, like I, I can't say this enough, we really love hearing from you. We love you engaging with us. If you have questions about um, how-to questions, about how to use APIs or how to do this or that, Stack Overflow is a great place for those. Tag those with the OfficeJS tag or the Outlook Web Add-ins tag. Uh, if you run into issues as you're using the Office JavaScript APIs, building Office add-ins, um, maybe something works in one platform but doesn't in another, and the docs say it's supposed to work in both, log an issue for us, report that in the OfficeJS repo. Members of the product team do monitor that repo and should engage with you there. Um, I mentioned user voice a minute ago. If you have feature requests, uh, for the APIs, please log them there. We do use that to prioritize uh, future investments in the APIs. And lastly, um, you always have the option to send feedback directly within an Office app uh, using the feedback feature that's available under the uh, file menu. Um, Cameron asked about whether there's any plan to support SSO for single page applications. Uh, Natasha, are you still on the call? Do you know anything about that? I think Natesh may have dropped. We'll have to follow up with you, Cameron. We'll, we'll um, answer that one in the blog post when we publish later this week. Good question. All right, that, that brings us to the end of the day's call. We're a little bit early, so we'll give you a few minutes back. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, the recording will be available on our developer YouTube channel, Office Developer YouTube channel, published soon. Our next call is second Wednesday in April, April 10th. And we encourage you to submit your questions ahead of time if you want to using this AKA MS link. And like I said earlier, if you don't already have the invite, uh, go ahead and add it to your calendar using this last link in this slide. We'll go ahead and paste those into the chat window as well. Thanks, everyone.